Good day, students. Welcome to math.serve.com. In this clip, we're going to be going over problems 36 to 40 of the Thea practice test. All right, let's take a look at 36. It says figure A, B, C, D, E is similar to figure F, G, I, J. If A is 5, F, J is 20, B, C is 40, what is G, H? So one thing I'd like you to recall concerning um, similar figures is the meaning of the word similar. Okay, so just a side note, you want to recall that if two um, objects, if two objects are similar, are similar, then what can we conclude? If two objects are similar, then corresponding sides, corresponding sides are in proportion. Okay, corresponding sides are in proportion. So what we're going to do in this problem, let's call the first figure, figure A, B, C, D, E, let's call that figure 1, and F, G, H, I, J, figure 2. We're going to be setting up statements of proportionality, basically saying that ratios of proportional sides are equal. Okay, ratio of corresponding sides are equal. Now, um, so what I'm going to do, let's put figure 1 as our numerator, okay? And then figure 2 will be our denominator. So that's going to help us keep track of our sides. Now, figure 1 is described using the vertices A, B, C, D, E. And figure 2 is F. G, H, I, J. Now you have to be careful with the alphabets. You must follow the same sequence that's provided in the problem. Okay? Now, um, A, E, and F, J. Let's see if we can figure that out. A, E goes from first to last. And then here we have F, J from first to last. Okay? So since these two letters fall in the same position in the two um Figures, guess what? They are corresponding, okay? So A, E from figure 1 is corresponding with F, J from figure 2, okay? Now we have to set up another ratio that can enable us to solve this uh, equation for the unknown. We have B, C. B, C is going from here to here. B, C, the second vertex to the third one. And then we have GH from here to here. The same position on the second geometric figure. So we can write another statement that BC and GH are corresponding sides. So since these two figures are similar, then these ratio corresponding sides have to be in proportion. Okay? So now that we've had this set up, we're just now going to substitute and solve. So AE is 5 over FJ, which is 20. That equal to BC, which is 40, over GH, that is the unknown. Okay, so to solve this, uh, we can cross-multiply. So if we cross-multiply, um, 20 goes up there, and GH goes over there. So if you cross multiply, you have uh, 5 times GH equals 20 times 40. All right, so 5GH equals, if you multiply 20 and 40, 2 times 4 is 8, and you add the two zeros. To finish this up, simply divide both sides of the equation by uh, 5. And that gives you the metric of GH. You can do this with your four function calculator. Um, you end up with 160. That's the measure of side GH. Answer is option letter D. Okay, number 37. It says if pentagon ABCDE is similar to pentagon GHIDF, in DIS 20, CD is 50, D is 45, what is DF? So this is the same um, procedure, the same idea as 
problem number 36. We have two similar figures, which basically means that correspondence sides are in proportion. All right, so let's call this one Pentagon 1 and Pentagon 2. Uh, so we're going to be setting the uh, proportions as follows. Pentagon 1 will be on top, and then Pentagon 2, the sides will be on the bottom. All right, we're going to be setting up ratios of corresponding sides. Okay, so we have A, B, C, D, E, and G, H, I, D, F. Okay, so you want to follow the alphabets uh, to help determine your corresponding sides. Okay, so we are told that DI is equal to 20 and CD is equal to uh, 50. So where is DI? See DI right here? Bam. That's DI. Pairing up these two sides. And here we have uh, CD. CD and DC are exactly the same thing. DI and ID are the same thing, okay? So these two sides are corresponding. So we're going to have, uh, let's put CD on top over CD corresponds with DI equals what else do we have we have uh, DE is 45 so DE is 45 and DF is what we're looking for so you, you see the importance of keeping track of where um, the, the sides where the pentagons come from so DE comes from pentagon 1, so that goes where? In the numerator, okay? And then DF comes from pentagon 2, which goes in the numerator, in the denominator, DF. If you look at the previous uh, measures we were given, the first one came from the second pentagon, which goes into the denominator, and the second measure came from the first pentagon, which goes to the top. But that order was switched in the second part of the statement. So it's always good to write down your pentagons and keep track of your alphabets where they're coming from and make sure that you're consistent. All right, the side measures have to come from the same um, geometric figure for the numerator, and then the same idea applies to the denominator. All right. Okay, now that we have it set up, let's we'll substitute and solve. CD is 50, DI is 20, DE is 45, DF, we do not know what that is. So we'll simply cross multiply, denominator to numerator, denominator to numerator, we'll now have 50 times DF equals uh, 20 times 45. Now to get DF, the unknown isolated, you can divide both sides by 50, divide by 50, divide by 50, that divides out, df, and then you can just simply plug this into your four function calculator uh, to determine the final answer, all right? So let me do that for you here, uh, 20 times 45, that is 900, divide that by 50, and our answer is 18, okay? So we have 900 divided by 50, which is 18, our answer is option letter C. Okay, so let's move on to question 38. It says use the diagram below to answer the question that follows. Line A is parallel to CD. What is the sum of the measure of angle K and the measure of angle Y? Okay, so we have parallel lines cut by a transversal. We have some uh, equations that we can write. Okay, so whenever you have to parallelize cut by a transversal, you look at the angles. The angles that look like they have the same measurement, in most cases, they are actually the same. And the angle of pairs that look different, guess what, are always supplementary. So any combination of angles you have here, they're either going to be equal or they're going to be supplementary. What does supplementary mean? They add up to 180 degrees. So in this problem, we're looking at angle K and angle Y. Do they look the same? The answer is no. So guess what? If they're not congruent in scenarios like this, they are supplementary. All right. So let me show you why they're supplementary. So um, my claim is that angle K and Y are supplementary. So this is the deal. Uh, angle K 
Uh, the measure of angle K is equal to the measure of angle N. This is because they're vertical angles, okay? Vertical angles are congruent. And then we have angle, the measure of angle N is equal to the measure of angle Z. The reason is because they are corresponding angles, corresponding angles of parallel lines cut by a transversal. Okay, so angle K is congruent to angle N, and angle N is congruent to angle Z. So what do you know about Y and Z? Uh, measure of angle Y, <laughs> let's write it again. Measure of angle Y plus measure of angle Z is equal to 180 degrees because you're a linear pair, all right? Well, we know that angle Z is equal to angle N and angle N is equal to angle K. So that holds that measure of angle Y plus measure of angle K is 180 degrees also. This is by substitution. Okay, so that clearly shows that um, these angle K and Y are supplementary angles already add up to 180. Our answer to number 38 is option letter C. All right, let's take a look at um, problem 39. It says, use the diagram below to answer the question that follows. It says, if triangle ABD is an equilateral triangle and line BD is parallel to CE, what is the measure of angle five? So this line right here is parallel to this line right here. So we have a scenario where we have two parallel lines cut by a transversal, AE. Now, um, what is the measure of an angle of an equilateral triangle? We know that the sum of angles in a triangle is 180 degrees, right? So if you split them evenly, 180 divided by 30, the angle measure of each angle of an equilateral triangle is 60 degrees. Okay, that's always the case. So what does that tell us about this problem? The measure of angle one is 60, the measure of angle 2 is 60, and the measure of angle 3 is 60 degrees also. But if you look at angle 3 and angle 4, they are corresponding angles of two parallel lines cut by a transversal. Okay, what do we know about corresponding angles of two parallel lines cut by a transversal? They are congruent. Okay, so a measure of angle 3 is equal to the measure of angle or because they're corresponding angles of parallel lines cut by a transversal. Okay, now we know that the measure of angle three is uh, 60 degrees, so it follows that the measure of angle four is also 60 degrees. That's by substitution. All right, now, uh, what is the relationship between angle four and angle five? They are a linear pair, so the measure of angle four plus the measure of angle five has to be 180 degrees. They form a linear pair, and we know that the sum of angles in a straight line is 180. Measure of angle four is 60 degrees, so 60 plus the measure of angle five is 180 degrees. So that in order to get angle five isolated, we simply subtract 60 degrees from both sides, and we end up with the measure of angle five is equal to 120 degrees. Option letter C is the correct answer for question number 39. Okay, let's take a look at question 48. It says, use the statements below to answer the question that follows. One, statement one, all people wearing hats have brown hair. Two, some of the people have red hair. Three, all the people who have brown hair like pizza. Four, people who have red hair like hamburgers. And then five, Carl has brown hair. Question, which of the following statements must be true? So in this problem, we're just simply going to take a look at each statement and see if we can arrive at a reasonable conclusion based on the um, information given. 
Carl likes pizza. Hmm. What do we know about um, the, the color of the hair of the people that like pizza? Well, let's take a look at this. We have Carl here. Carl has brown hair. Okay. Now, what do we know about people that have brown hair? Let's see. All people wearing hats have brown hair. Some of the people have red hair. All the people who have brown hair like pizza. Well, you see the connection there? All the people that have brown hair, all the people that have brown hair like pizza. Okay? Since Carl has brown hair, Carl likes pizza. All right, so let's go ahead and write it down. Statement three, all people uh, who have brown hair, brown hair, like pizza. All right, and then from four, since uh, Carl has brown hair, what's the conclusion that we can draw? The conclusion is that um, Carl likes pizza because he has brown hair. He's one of the people that has brown hair and everybody that has brown hair likes pizza. So we can automatically conclude that statement number one, uh, letter A is the correct answer. I'm gonna make a quick correction here. This is supposed to be likes pizza. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. I really appreciate it. If you found the contents of this tutorial helpful in your preparation for the upcoming Texas High School Education um, Math Assessment, do give us a thumbs up. Your positive feedback is very valuable and supportive to us. If you have any questions or like any support getting ready for the test, just place your question in the comment section below, and we'll be more than glad to support you. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for updates to the remainder of this review series. More clips can be found on mathcoserve.com under test prep. Thanks again for watching and have a wonderful day.